Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> In Austria is afternoon, <laughs> but yes. good morning. Good morning, USA. <coughs> that, that's right. That's right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining, Nicola. I appreciate your time. I know you have been really busy lately, and I really appreciate taking the time to to have uh, this interview with me. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. And yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk about Power BI, of course. Yes. Yes. So let's let's wait a couple more minutes. We have three people there. Perhaps there is more people joining the interview to make this more interesting. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Ashby says hi. Let's see. Hello, everyone. This is great. So people are joining. That's awesome. So we are basically seven hours apart. Is that correct, Nicola? Yeah, that's correct. It's half past four p.m. here in Austria. Yes. Nine thirty-four here in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, so you you probably had your breakfast <laughs> recently yeah. and I finished my lunch and preparing for dinner soon. <laughs> a few minutes ago, I had my, <laughs> my breakfast. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we get started and hopefully more and more people can join later. So let me share the screen real quick just to have uh, an idea about what we're going to be talking about here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, can you guys see my screen now? I can see it. Hopefully, the others can too. Okay. Cool, cool. 8 p.m. in India. There you go. See? Ah, oh, so okay. We... Good evening, India. <laughs> Yes, good evening. We have people from all over the world here, so that's amazing. Thank you guys for, for joining this interview. Okay, so let's talk about Power BI. That's our language, right, Nicola? And yeah. what what you should know about Power BI. I know Power BI has been one of the, in my opinion, one of the best Power BI or best data visualization tools, in my opinion, like I said, and let's learn more about this tool. So let's do that. Yeah, cool. OK, so we have five different points here that we want to be going through. We're going to start, of course, with an introduction just to learn more about ourselves, more about Nicola. Uh, we're going to talk about data visualization with this awesome tool with Power BI. Also, Nicola has some recommendations for us, for those who are just learning this uh, data visualization tool really, really good sources that Nicola has for us. And then Nicola is also sharing his platforms with us, his educational platforms. He's sharing a lot of knowledge uh, online. So he has really good sources there. And then in the end, we have the final thoughts. And that would be it. So let's get started with the introduction. All right, Nicola, please tell us more about yourself, your background. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, okay. So my name is Nikola, and uh, I'm originally from Belgrade in Serbia. That's the capital city of Serbia, uh, former Yugoslavia. Uh, so I was born there and raised there. And uh, so for last more than five years, uh, I live in uh, in work in the city of Salzburg in Austria. Uh, so I work as a business intelligence developer, and. Uh, yeah, I enjoy living in Salzburg, so that's why I chose in this nickname Data Mozart, because a lot of people ask me, they thought that I'm a fan of classic music. I mean, I'm not really. So the the, the only reason why I chose this nickname is because, uh, yeah, I was thinking what would be interesting, I don't know, uh, to be a kind of, you know, to have something authentic. And uh, here in Salzburg, everything is in, in sign of Mozart because he was born uh, here and uh, 
So I thought, yeah, why not Data Mozart? And yeah, that that's uh, how my nickname uh, was established. So yes, as I, as I told you, I, I live here for more than five years. Uh, privately, I have two kids and yeah, so I would say pretty much normal stuff. And uh, other than that, as you can conclude, looking at this photo, I'm a big football and Barca fan. Uh, which is not so popular these days, but yeah, hopefully Barca will recover. And uh, yeah, so I can proudly say again that I'm I'm a true Barca fan since '90s. So not not j just this last you know successful uh, period, but also before that. So it's since '90s, uh, yeah, basically that that's in in shortly uh, about me. So regarding professional experience, I'm working with different data products for a decade or more more uh it's predominantly microsoft data platform uh, i will start i started with sql server uh, then also continue with the uh, sql server integration services reporting services uh, analysis services multi-dimensional and uh, yeah power bi is the most recent uh, passion let's call it like this so i i work with power bi for last so not from the beginning but for last maybe four years around four years and I'm a big fan of Power BI, of course. So basically, that's about my professional experience. Uh, that's good. Thank you for sharing. So yeah, like I said, I didn't. Well, I already knew that you were a fan of Barcelona because of your jersey. So and I was wow. We we some we have something in common here. We we like Power BI. We like soccer. And why don't we get together and you know just have a conversation about these two topics? Yeah, sure, so. sure. That's that's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like you said, Barcelona is struggling now, but eventually they will they will they will be there as well. Yeah, it's again. it's an end of so. cycle, so they they need to to start basically not from scratch, but yeah, almost let's say almost from scratch. But they'll that's they'll right. be good. They'll be good. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, just real quick, let me give you. Guys, more background about myself. For those who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Nestor Adriansen, and I live currently in the United States, but I'm not American. I'm Peruvian. I was born in Peru, South America, and I love soccer as well. When I was a kid, I used to play a lot of soccer in the streets in Peru. So it was, it was a good sport uh, to play when I was a kid. And now, uh, I for soccer right barcelona is one of my favorite teams so and i also love power bi so which is one of the the tools that we want to be talking about today so that's my quick story and now let's go to the next point <coughs> okay so here we have three questions uh, let's go over these questions real quick, Nicola, if you don't mind. So let's get started with the first question. I already, I think you already mentioned this before, but let's let's do just a quick review about mm -hmm. the first question. When did you, when did the passion for Power BI start? Yeah, in the beginning it was not a passion; it was necessity. <laughs> so, uh, so I started four years ago, basically in uh, in. Um, my company, we implemented the uh, Power BI report server solution. So it's on-prem solution for, for delivering uh, different reports. And uh, all reports were based on the, the, the uh, older technology, which is SQL Server reporting services. So basically, we uh, upgraded our uh, report server to a Power BI version. And then one day, uh, a lady from the other department uh, showed me some report that she was preparing manually doing stuff in Excel. And I told her, hey, there is a new tool, Power BI. Let me try to, you know, create something for you. Maybe you'll, you'll find it useful. And for me, it was interesting just to play around to see how it works. So that's how I started. And yeah, since then, I have, I moved like, I don't know, more than 50 reports from the old uh, technology to to Power BI, and uh, that's that's how I started. So in, in the beginning, it was not a passion. No one else wanted to to do this uh, uh, 
to do these tasks of uh, migrating reports from SQL Server reporting services to Power BI. So I started, and then uh, as the time uh, as the time was was passing by, I fell in love with Power BI, and uh, I was trying to learn more and more stuff. And that's that's how it started. How it all started, like four years ago. Yeah, and also the tool is quite new as well, right? Yeah, officially it's a, it's a it's a separate tool since July 2015, but it was part of Excel in mm -hmm. some previous uh, previous versions. But 2015 is officially a start start year of of Power BI Desktop. Right. It it's I believe it started with Power Pivot. Is yeah, it correct? started with Power Pivot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, the technology okay. in the background is is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that that's good. I mean, like like you said, everyone is quite familiar with Excel, and, and when I say everyone, I'm talking about the analysts, the ones that who who deal with data. And like you said, right, this new tool appeared about four or five years ago, and then. We have to implement this change, and sometimes it's a little bit challenging for for some of us, and for others it's a little bit easier if they have a different type of background. So, so let me let's talk about the second point here. So, what is the easiest and more challenging part of Power BI according to your experience? That's that's almost impossible to to answer. To give a correct answer because it's so individual. So it depends on your background. It's, it depends on your preferences. I can tell you from my experience what's what was the easiest and, and more challenging part of Power BI. So uh, uh, for me, the, the uh, let's start with the easiest part. So uh, I'm coming from the from the SQL background, the relational data model, data uh, data world. So for me. Data modeling is something that I learned during my college and uh, which I was working on uh, later uh, before Power BI even even existed. So uh, data modeling part for me, even if for, for a lot of people it's most challenging for me, it's I would say it's maybe not the easiest, but uh, that's that's the part of of Power BI that I enjoy working most. Yeah. Uh, most challenging part for me was uh, learning DEX, and uh, <laughs> just because it's uh, completely different than uh, than all the other programming languages that I used to work with previously, and uh, I still don't know DEX well enough, of course. Uh, so I still try to improve in in that area. Uh, and also for me, challenging part is because I'm a SQL guy. Uh, I think I'm not using Power Query to full extent, so I'm trying to to solve things using SQL instead of M. That's that's from my perspective. And I would like to hear your experience, for example, because I, I guess it's probably different. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, uh, with with Dax. Uh, Dax might might seem quite simple at the beginning, but then the more you start learning, the more you think you need to learn. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Like, man, I, I knew how to do this. And then next next week I'm doing something similar and the formula and the functions are not working. Yeah. I'm getting a totally different result and I'm getting frustrated. Say, like, what is going on with DAX? So it, it, it's a quite challenging uh, programming language. I would say that. But like like everything, right? It's it's a process. It takes time. Um, and one of the the recommendations that I would say about DAX, according to my experience, is learn the basics first. Learn the basics first. So if you know the basics, you will be able to understand different type of scenarios, right? Because a formula might work for this scenario, but if you don't know the basics, you might not be able to translate to a different scenario. But once you have the basics in your mind, it doesn't matter, right? Because you know the concept. 
you know that this uh, you have to use calculate for example right to change the context filter and uh, those type of things that it's it's going to be really helpful if you're trying to learn this awesome uh, language but like you said it's it's tough at the beginning but don't give up just keep going keep going keep going eventually you will get there i mean sure, like, sure, like, sure. and it's i'm still learning and it's a process. I'm learning from the, the main guys, Marco Russo and Alberto Yeah, of course, Ferrari. of course. So I also have the book, one of the books <laughs> that they have. So it's 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 a long process, but- It's a bi Bible, the Dex Bible. <laughs> it's a Dex Bible, that's why. <laughs> yes, and yeah, that's what I have to share with you regarding the, the most challenging part of Power BI. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the easiest part for you the easiest part is to create uh, basic reports because you can you can drop you can drag and drop, right? You don't yeah. even have to know to create measures because yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Are, yeah. there are implicit measures there already. But that's just the basic, right? So you can have just a basic dashboard, a basic report. But if you want to take advantage of the of the data you definitely need to learn DAX. Sure, fully agree, so, fully agree. Yeah, fully agree. Uh, so I'm just dropping here one of the, the phrases that Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari have. They have this. DAX is simple, but not easy. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you might be familiar with that, with yeah. that phrase. <laughs> I'm typing here. So ah, you have a, you have a typo, sorry, but it's now easy. It's uh, it's completely different meaning, so it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's not easy. That's what I meant. <laughs> Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. I I'm trying to multitask here, so I'm terrible multitasking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just for okay. the people to don't to don't get a wrong impression that it's um, now easy. It's yeah, never it's, easy. <laughs> it's it's not easy. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. So let's ask the the the, uh, the followers if they guy if what they think about DAX, right? If you guys can leave us your comments, that would be awesome. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's talk about the sources here. What kind of sources have you used to learn Power BI? Yeah, so that's that's a good, that's a good question uh, because I I was uh, I'm approached but lot of pe by a lot of people even though these days and uh, all of them might have similar question. Uh, I'm starting to use uh, Power BI. I'm starting to working with Power BI. Uh, where should I start? What should I learn? Uh, what do you recommend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I started by uh, yeah checking community uh, forum on Power BI. Uh, dot com, so that's how I started to solve the problems. And then, uh, by the time I was uh, discovering uh, different, uh, different, uh, very useful resources uh, that I'm still using, and so I'm trying to, like every day, I'm trying to either watch something, either read something. Uh, I have uh, a group of people that I closely follow, and uh, I will share, of course. Uh, who are those people and uh, so you can also check their blogs and, and videos uh, but uh, there are uh, first I want to say that there are so many fantastic resources for learning Power BI and let's say 95% of them are free so there is no excuse uh, I can't learn Power BI because uh, there are no resources or because I don't, I don't have money to pay for them so you can literally uh, master Power BI uh, I mean, in theory, you can master it. You, of course, you have to practice and work on it to to improve your skills. But you can master the the, the knowledge of Power BI for free, definitely. So, uh, I like to read books. So I would I would suggest from uh, let's say books. The one you mentioned, uh, it's definitive guide to DAX from Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. It's kind of advanced level. So if someone is completely new to, to DEX, to Power BI, maybe it's uh, it's hard to understand. But uh, anyway, I read it twice. 
So first time I was like, I don't have a clue what's this all about. And then second time when you're reading some concepts, uh, yeah, look, look more, um, how to say, look more uh, reasonable, yeah, than than in in the first run. That's that's regarding DAX. Uh, other than that, I would suggest reading uh, books on data modeling. That's really important topic in Power BI, and I think that a lot of people are. Um, overlooking this topic and uh, you know just jump into power bi i can as you said i can drag and drop and everything is there for me data modeling star schema so there is a book called star schema uh, there is a book called uh, data warehouse toolkit which is like a what is marcos and alberto's book for dex data warehouse toolkit is for data modeling so it's not it's tool agnostic, so it's not related strictly to Power BI, but uh, it shares concepts of dimensional modeling, why star schema is important, how to build star schema. And uh, by the time you will be grateful for reading this book uh, because Power BI is all about star schema in the end when it comes to data modeling. Uh, other than that, yeah, so you can also read, I don't know, I'm not so familiar with Power Query as I said, so I can't recommend some specific book but I have some uh, blogs that I follow on, on this topic, so I can share that with you. When it comes to videos, uh, of course, a guy in a cube. Yeah, I collect combined. That's Gil Raviv, I think. Or is it Gil? Yeah, this is about Power Query. Yeah, is it by Gil Raviv? For yes, written? yes. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that book. I, I haven't read it, but I've heard about that book, and it's, yeah, it's recommended. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for when it comes to video resources, uh, I would say all of us guy in a cube. We are watching guy in a mm -hmm. cube. Uh, then also Ruth from Kurbal. Uh, she's mm -hmm. also she she's her channel is also very popular. Uh, there are more many more many more uh, channels that specialized in some areas of Power BI. Uh, so. Uh, also blogs that this is the, the 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 maybe the most important uh resource for learning because you can for free get some really expert knowledge from uh recognizable people so uh, mm -hmm. for example uh i'm following chris webb uh phil Seamark, their bot from microsoft uh, customer advisory team uh phil Seamark has a lot of great uh articles on topics of for data modeling for performance for dex uh, it's dex.tips so his uh, blog is dex.tips oh, chris webb also mostly about performance and uh, how things work in the background so i'm i'm always interested to learn how things work uh, you know mm -hmm. under the hood so why is this query processed in one way not in another stuff like that so his blog is fantastic for this uh, other than that, also, uh, I would I would forget someone. So that's that's the the reason I'm not. <laughs> of course, SQL be, SQLBI.com Italians. Uh, I also suggest uh, following Co uh Melissa, Melissa from Codes uh, Data Strategy for Data Governance. Uh, that's also important topic with some other uh, things in Power BI that are not strictly related to visualization, development, etc., but for data governance, who has access to what, how to share, what are the best practices to share the reports, to share the, the applications, uh, also, also strongly recommended. Matthew Roche from Microsoft, also his ssbipolar.com, also fantastic resource for, for learning. Not just Power BI, but I would say, uh, hold this data stack and, and get a feeling how uh, get a, a wider picture where Power BI uh, fits in. So that's from top of my head. Yes, th those are really, really, really good uh, sources. I'm going to share here the link. So talking about Chris Weber. Is he Chris Weber? His last name Weber. Chris Webb. Web. Chris Webb. Uh, Chris, Chris Webb. Okay. Yeah. 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 I uh, maybe follow. I can find him uh, while we are talking. Maybe I can ha find his blog. Yeah, I actually found it. So it's a in block. the chat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good source there. 
Yeah, Reza also. Sorry, I forgot Reza. Yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks for yeah, yeah. Also, also fantastic. Also, yeah, I, I, I told <laughs> I will forget someone definitely. So there are many, many resources. It's hard to you know to remember everyone. Yeah, from top of the head. So yeah, that's right. So going back to it's actually it's style schema. So who's the author there? Uh, for uh, the Data Warehouse Toolkit is Ralph Kimball. Who's the author for that? Yeah, for Data Warehouse Toolkit is and Ralph Kimball. Stars. For Star Schema. About Star Schema. Oh. That's on my list. I wanted to buy that book as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, Christopher Adamson. So I'll put a link from Amazon. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Yeah, that's Star okay. Schema book. Also, Data Warehouse Toolkit is, let's say, it's called Bible for dimensional modeling for Star Schema. So also strongly recommend okay. it to read and and understand those principles when you're building data model, when you're preparing stuff before jumping into Power BI. Right, so you said Data Warehouse Toolkit. Yeah. Okay. I also put uh, a link. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's in. Okay. It's an older book, but still very very relevant <coughs> mm -hmm. okay do you in have some of... additional sources ah uh -huh, sorry sorry go ahead you uh, you actually cover almost all the sources that i had in mind so thank you for doing that but i would like i have another source and that and that's just for for the words in general i have two books but i don't have it with me right now so basically those books help you understand which color you should use to create your report, for example, right? So how to allocate your visuals on your canvas. So for example, the main and most relevant information should be on the upper left corner of your, your screen, right? Because we see, we go from left to right, right? And then from from top to, to bottom. So that's mm -hmm. how we read. So it is a lot of science and also, I believe, art uh, with these concepts, but it's definitely helpful to understand those concepts to create really, really nice uh, visualizations. Is it maybe storytelling with data? That's a good one. Yeah, I already read that one, storytelling with data. That's Yeah, that's I have right. it also here, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's here. Yeah. Okay, so cool, cool. Thank you for sharing. So now... Let's before we go to the next topic, let's talk about the the monthly Power BI updates because I have I have right here on my notes. So I know sometimes it's really overwhelming to see new information every month. I say, come on, I'm just learning this concept and now I have something new to learn. It's like there is the this never stops. There's always something new going on. So what do you think about that? About those updates that we have? Just, yeah, that's guy. that's both as you said that that's both great and that's both uh, overwhelming. Yeah. So for example, if you go for a holiday, I don't know, and <laughs> for three or four weeks, and you don't follow up on one month update, then when you're back from holiday, there is another, there is a there is a next update. So it's hard to keep the pace. It's hard to 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 yeah to. Keep in mind everything, and uh, I try to to watch those videos for monthly updates just to have a clue what's happening. So later, if I need to implement something, then I can revert back and I can remember. Oh, wait, maybe I've seen there that somewhere or something like this. But it's really hard to go deep into each and every feature they're they're implementing every month. So it's it's really hard. It's really hard. But in the end. I think that uh, 
yeah, basics and those those uh, uh, substantial things, they are not changing. So if you learn to create a proper data model, if you learn star schema, it will be always relevant. So you don't care. Uh, okay, it's nice to have, I don't know, uh, some, this, uh, some of these uh, cool AI features uh, like Q and A, I don't know, decomposition trees and uh, influencers, so so like something like that. It's cool to showcase to a management, but in the end, that's like you know tip of an iceberg. So everything which is which is fundamental is below. That that's that's how I perceive Power BI. Yes, yes, I agree. The basics are already there. So these new changes, right? Th those are just improvements exactly so, but but basics if you guys are already quite familiar with the basics it wouldn't be too too in the opposite i would say it would be very very helpful so yeah. do, do you have any update in mind that you you might have found really relevant uh, lately? honestly yeah honestly i i think that maybe there are five to ten features per year that are mm -hmm. really really important and that are really really relevant all of the others are small improvements you know nice to have things of course that's that's nice to have but uh, for example the, the the automatic aggregations that's the thing i want to play with uh, i can't find time these days but uh, that that's uh, the latest uh, addition from the previous month and that's something i want to to jump in and play with to to see how it works and to compare with, you know, user-defined aggregations to compare the performance. And uh, basically, the idea is uh, the Power BI will collect data from the most frequently run queries, and it will automatically build aggregations on that for that queries, so that they should run. They should be run faster, uh, in theory, and you don't need to manage aggregations by yourself. So that that will be automatically managed by Power BI. That's the idea. I want to see how this how this looks in reality. Basically, that's that's a feature that that uh, I was excited to see. Other than that, those yeah nice small improvements. Also, this thing is good labels for line visuals from the latest uh, update. That that's also nice. But uh, other than that, all the others are. Okay, thank you. Nice to have, but yes, 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 I agree. Yeah, serious labels is, is a good one. Yeah. I was actually working on a couple of reports in the past months of the work, and then I was, how can I do this in Power BI? I don't know why these guys don't have it ready. I was just, yeah. just <laughs> asking myself, right? We and were then... all asking ourselves why. Right, and then finally, it arrived yeah in september so that was that was a good addition there and then the other one uh, that i i also feel it's really helpful is the aggregation functions as part of the filtered arguments for the calculate function so that's mm -hmm. also a good one and um, I, I used to get a lot of errors because i'm still, like i said i'm still getting familiar with the engine because i don't know how it works properly right and then i was just adding aggregation functions as part of the the filtered arguments for calculate and i was getting errors so what's going on with this but now with this new update i don't get errors anymore so that's awesome <laughs> yeah there's there there uh, made this syntax a little bit simpler mm -hmm. yeah basically what was what was happening when you write when you write calculate uh your filter argument implicitly was converted every time it was wrapped with filter all. So even if you don't write it, uh, Vertipack engine in the background will wrap it with filter all. So they, they just remove this. You don't need to, you don't need to use this uh, explicitly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, really, really helpful updates. So another, another topic that I have here, and we touched this briefly at the beginning, it's about optimization. I know everyone gets so excited about Power BI. Everyone puts together the reports. Everyone is getting three or four different fact tables into the into the model, and then they are creating uh, apparently really well built models. 
But if you don't mind, could you please tell us more about optimization in general? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a wide topic. Uh, when when you say optimization, uh, yeah, in Power BI you can optimize things on multiple levels, on multiple and uh, multiple areas. So uh, I have a session which is one hour just on Power BI performance, and ju I'm just scratching the surface of different things. So it's like for an eight-hour talk, <laughs> of course. But let's let's quickly. So first thing you need to uh, you have some things in the background that can be optimized. For example, data model itself, uh, size of data model, what columns do you import, uh, what level of granularity do you import. If you have date time uh, data in your in your uh, database or Excel file or whatever you are importing, do you need this part with hours, minutes, and seconds? Uh, there is a thing. There is a feature called cardinality in the column. So uh, I, I just want. I don't want to go. Uh, you know, uh, far from the topic. But uh, the thing uh, with optimization, data model optimization, is uh, when you have column with high cardinality. And cardinality means number of unique values in the column. So when you have a column with high cardinality, uh, then Power BI engine, VertiPack engine, can't uh, compress this data properly. And that will affect performance, and that will affect your data model size. So there are some different. There, there are different techniques to optimize cardinality to reduce the cardinality. One of them is, for example, to change date time to date if you don't need uh, some kind of analysis on a second level. I think it's it's very rare situation that you need to do some analysis on a second level, uh, stuff like that. Then uh, also, uh, how many rows will you import in Power BI? Do you need data from last five years or two years or ten years? Then also uh, a big big fallacy that I'm seeing is that people think that direct query will make them make their uh, reports faster. That's that that will never happen. So direct query is something that you should try to avoid at any cost. So there are literally three scenarios when you want to use direct query. Uh, other than that, always import mode. Always import mode. That's uh, how Power BI is built to run most efficiently. So direct query is uh, more of exception than than a rule to to use. Then also for DAX optimization, I'm not competent to to talk about this honestly. Uh, but you can read you can read uh, Marcos and Alberto's articles, and uh, they are talking about DAX optimization. Uh, when it comes to vis visuals, data visualization optimization, how many visuals do you have on your on in your report? Uh, some, it's not a rule, but it's a recommendation not to have more than 15 or 20 uh, elements on your report page. So if you have more than that recommendation is to split it into multiple pages uh, because when you load the page all these visuals need to be rendered and uh, the engine that works in the background formula engine uh, works in a single threaded way so just imagine that you have 50 visuals and formula engine will send 50 different queries for for uh, those visuals and this the last one in the queue We'll need to wait all of these 49 to execute and render before it comes to 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 a queue to to be executed. So keep in mind, be mindful when you are putting you know everything on on the report canvas. Just think, will this visual improve something uh, in this report? Do I need this? Uh, don't put too many images, icons, uh, text boxes. So each of those elements need to be rendered. So it's like I don't know, few milliseconds. But if you have a lot of them and you multiply it's in the end it's it's a lot of time i mean it's a lot of time it's maybe a second but why wasting second if you don't need to so for my recommendation for example if someone wants to design uh, a report page in that way that there will be a lot of icons and uh, and shapes i don't know rectangles and circles or whatever go to power powerpoint build your design and then you can save this design as a PNG and then just import this PNG as a, as a report background. So you have one element instead of, I don't know, 10 or 20. That That's recommendation. So uh, there are a lot of areas when we, where we can talk about in performance improvement, but uh, let's, let's say that uh, 
uh, if you ask me, I, I always want to, to separate five of them. So it's data model, it's a data refresh process, is uh, then it's uh, DEX, then it's uh, data visualization, and finally it's storage mode, direct query versus import. So they, these are my five pillars when, when uh, talking about Power BI performance. And each of them, of course, can be uh, yeah, analyzed in more details. There are so many, so many potential subtopics there. Yes, uh, you mentioned something really, really important, and it's related to the 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 number of visuals that we should have in our reports, right? Because sometimes we can get very excited and we can put a lot of visuals there, but we don't think about the performance because performance might be a huge issue there if we have other visuals. So I would like to mention that when we want to have more details for a specific and we can use another tools like tooltips and also we can use a uh, drill through. Exactly. Those might be really, really good uh, tools to use if we want to enrich our reports. Exactly, exactly. Especially drill through. So for example, if you have mm -hmm. a table with I don't know, million of rows, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it will kill your performance. But if you aggregate data in that table and then give a possibility to user to, to drill through to see some detailed data, then it's 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 much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. So before we move on to the next topic, let's briefly talk about the external tools that we have in Power BI and how useful they are. Yeah, uh, I'm personally, I'm using DAX Studio and Tabular Editor, those two. There are, of course, many more, uh, but I'm using those two on a regular basis. So I would say maybe not on a daily basis, but uh, yes, definitely, definitely, I'm, I'm using them regular. So DAX Studio, fantastic for, for uh, understanding what's going on with your uh, data model. So what is the size, what is the different different metrics behind your data model and to uh, to check your queries and uh, and try to optimize them. So DAX Studio, fantastic tool, free tool. If, you do, if you're not using it, go right away and download it from daxstudio.org. It's free and it's amazing. Uh, Tabular Editor is also fantastic, uh, fantastic addition. Uh, version 2 tabular tabular editor version 2 is still free tabular editor 3 the latest one is uh paid but personally i switched to 3 uh yeah because i think it's worth so it helps you automate many of the many of the regular tasks so so writing scripts and uh, also some of the things some of the features you can't implement directly in Power BI Desktop, like calculation groups or object level security, you have to have a tabular editor for uh, for taking advantage of these features. So it's also, if you ask me, it's also a must have. If you don't want to pay, go and take tabular editor two. It has 70% of, of features that tabular three has. Yes, those are good sources there. Uh, we have a question here from Dr. Forgive me if I don't know how to pronounce your name, Dr. Vive Vivaf Hayes. Uh, let's see. Free resources for Power BI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We already uh, mentioned some of them, I believe, but yeah. if you have something yeah. in mind. Sure, uh, it depends on the current level of, of skills you have in Power BI. If you are complete beginner, I always suggest starting with the basics. Uh, Microsoft Learn has very good, uh, very good uh, learning path for Power BI, so you can start there. Uh, also, Dashboard in a Day is a free four hours workshop where uh, you can apply and you literally start from, hey, this is Power BI desktop. This is your environment. This is how you get data. This is how you connect to data. So it's four hours. It's for complete beginner and it's free. So my recommendations would be either dashboard in a day, uh, either uh, either Microsoft Learn uh, uh, learning path on on their website. So if if uh, just with the with the assumption that the 
Dr. Vibe Hub is, is a beginner. Mm -hmm. So what was the other source you mentioned, Microsoft? Microsoft and Learn and Dashboard in a Day. That's, dashboard in a Day, OK. Yeah, yeah. Dashboard. that's that's official. That's official workshop performed by Microsoft partners uh, mm. around the world. So you have it at all continents. It's online at the moment because of the pandemic and everything else. So mm -hmm. everyone can apply and there, it's, it's a four hour workshop where you are starting literally from the from the mm -hmm. basics and in in these four hours you build uh you get some some basic knowledge and uh, you can build a dashboard after four hours mm -hmm. okay that's cool so yeah. i'm just dashboard in a day correct? exactly dashboard in a day okay so that's a really good resource there for those who are just starting learning power bi Okay, so this is this is really really good stuff. Now let's move on to the next point. And let's see. Yeah, I think we already mentioned this, but we can briefly touch this this part as well. So, what pieces of advice do you have for those who are learning part? Yeah, this awesome tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The main advice would be don't forget the background part. So with uh, with uh, yeah uh, data modeling especially, don't forget this part. Don't just jump in, put everything in Power BI, and then I will go and build my dashboards, and uh, everyone will be impressed. Yes, that's nice, but uh, if you want to build, you know, a scalable solutions and and uh, uh, to support maybe some some uh, uh, more. Uh, robust workloads then don't forget the background and the data modeling so that's for me that's the most important advice as i saw a lot of people uh coming from excel world no offense to anyone but uh, people that used to work in excel has one way of uh, doing things so it's a big table uh, everything is in one table uh, no mod, no data model, no dimensional modeling, no star schema. They put this table in Power BI and then uh, start building visuals. That's okay for some, uh, for some you know basic scenarios. But uh, yeah, in the in the in the longer run, uh, you should learn star schema and then data modeling principles. Yeah, that, that's my advice. Yes, I agree. Star schema is key, and also. When to build a model first, right? To create the right relationships first, and then exactly. we can start creating our yeah. or whatever we want to do with that data. Where you have so a proper key, model like... and proper relationships, as you mentioned, yeah, then your calculations will be correct. Your calculations will run faster. Yeah, so spend some time in the in the behind the scenes before you, yeah, <laughs> before you build those nice charts. That's right, because we, we might be getting the, the wrong results if we don't create the correct data model, the exactly. correct relationships. Exactly. And we will get frustrated, right? So what's yeah. going on with this with this <laughs> with this yeah. data? Yeah, absolutely. So hey, we have another question here from Ash. Uh, let's see. Ash is asking, when should I appear for DA one hundred? That's the question. Uh yeah, DA one hundred. When should I appear? Uh, I mm -hmm. think I don't understand fully this question. Yeah, uh, I think he's trying to say when is a good time to to take this test. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, um, if you're working with Power BI, so if if your mm -hmm. daily job, uh, if your daily job uh, require requires using of Power BI, then I think you are good to go. Um, you will pass the you will pass the exam. That's my experience. Uh, if you're not working with Power BI, you need to spend some time practicing and learning uh, learning some stuff. Again, if you want specifically to prepare for DA100, there is a learning path on Microsoft site uh, on Microsoft platform where you can for free complete this uh, this learning path, and that should be enough to pass the exam. From my experience, if you are working on Power BI, if you have real experience with Power BI, you don't need to spend so much time. There are some, you know, gotchas like uh, where do you click to, I don't know, enable column distribution or something like that. That 
maybe you you can't remember that from top of your head if you haven't used it uh, recently but uh, yeah that that's that's if that was the question so yeah yes so one of the one of the struggles that i have seen i've been seeing for for this type of test is that most people most power bi uh, developers which uh, which they are still beginners right so those who are beginners they have some type of knowledge about power bi and mostly this is related to just power bi desktop but in the test uh, i already i haven't taken the test yet i was quite busy but i already went over the over the sources that you just mentioned the part the microsoft sources to to take the test and i noticed that we have some concepts about power bi service so exactly. those who are not those who are not familiar with power bi service which is the online version of power bi they might have some some challenges there right i don't know why would you like to add about power bi service regarding the test yeah i agree i agree if you uh, there are some uh, questions that relate to more to administration so uh, how do you grant access to something and uh, how do you you know handle some things uh, around access and uh, sharing uh, things if someone is not working with power bi service with the administration part of power bi then it's good to read this documentation because every, everything is there but other than that from the perspective of let's say core development in power bi i think yes everyone who who uses it regularly will not have problem to to pass the test that's my experience i took it while while it was in beta like in june last mm -hmm. year my may last mm -hmm. year uh but yeah more or less that that's my experience mm -hmm. no, that's good thank you thank you for sharing there so i have another question here uh, let me show you so venu Godda, Godda, Godda is asking this question. I am look. I'm looking for a job in the analytics field. Could you guys just some important things to look for? Uh, yeah. When, yeah, my suggestion when someone is looking for a job in a specific field is to uh, open ten or fifteen job advertisements for this position and check what uh, technologies tools and skills are companies searching for of course you can't be master of everything uh, but if you if you t uh, if you see in uh, 80 90 percent of those advertisements one skill that is repeating then you should spend some time to to try to learn this this uh, tool or whatever or concept it is uh from i was not searching for a job recently so i can't tell you exactly go and learn this or this but generally some concepts like uh we, we mentioned in analytics field uh yeah i mean excel is a must then if you go with the with the uh, microsoft uh on this way you you'll face with the uh, power bi you will probably face with some uh, sql uh along the way probably you will need to 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 uh work with relational data uh there are other tools also for analytics tableau click i don't know uh so specifically uh to suggest but generally you should in any way learn uh data modeling how to clean data what is data cleaning? What is data shaping? Uh, how to prepare data for the report? So these are the concepts that are not related specifically to a tool, that, that but it's necessary, in my opinion, to for a good analyst, it's necessary to have. Yes, I agree with that. So real quick, we have two more questions here, and let's go. Let's go over Ash question. So companies require you to have knowledge of many data sources such Azure, Python, R script. Is this requirement justified? 
Yeah, that's a hard question. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a company. <laughs> for yeah. for them, it's justified, definitely. But yeah. no, I mean, uh, if you're applying for some higher position, senior position, maybe someone expect. But Python and R, it's like uh, Windows and Linux. So you will hard find people that are highly skilled in both of them. So it's either Python or R. So basically, uh, from what I know, uh, yeah, I guess Azure the... Azure is a wide topic. So Azure is a wide topic. Mm -hmm. uh, which part of Azure date related to data, or I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. databases or uh, servers? Well, I don't know. I, I'm I'm Azure is so so wide topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it also depends on the on the role, right? Because for, for some roles, it might be relevant to have just a, a basic knowledge of Python. Maybe for a different role, it would be just you have to have that knowledge. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I guess it depends on the role. Yeah. But a lot of them, they, you know, they put everything in the advertisement. And of <laughs> course, they're not insisting that you that you know uh, everything from, from these uh, technologies and mm -hmm. tools. Yeah, especially you can't be skilled in similar tools that I mean uh, different tools, but that that are being used for similar purpose like Python and R. And R. So mm -hmm. it's hard to find. Right, right. Okay. So here we have another one. So what are the best tips for DAX? Yeah, if you're starting, uh, of course you can always refer to to Marco and Alberto. Their blog, uh, they have also YouTube channel, they have book there, but that's kind of, you know, I suggest these two people who already uh, had, has some, have some experience with DAX, at least some basic experience. But if you're a complete beginner, uh, Brian Grant, uh, I forgot to mention him previously, he has a series of videos on, on learning DAX in a very uh, interesting and intuitive way. So it's called uh, Elements of DAX. It's called Elements of DAX. You can find it on, on YouTube and uh, it's a series of, I don't know, 50 videos, short videos, but uh, very, very uh, entertaining to, to watch and to learn DAX from, from scratch. Brian, what's his last name? Brian Grant. 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 With D at the end or T? T. 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 Okay. Brian Grant. Okay. I'm just adding here the, the sources in the chat so they can read it. Okay. It's right there. Brian Grant. Uh, I think it's with Y. Uh, instead of Y, it's I. I. Okay, okay, okay. So Let's try like to this. find him. Brian mm -hmm. Grant. Okay, that one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Venu ha has the, the right source right there. Ryan Grant CSG Pro. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Ben. That That's it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. This is a good conversation. So let's move on to the next point. All right. So let's talk about uh, the sources that you have for the team. Um, I know you have a lot of content and I've seen your content. I've, I've read your content. Thank you for sharing that. Thank so you. I'm Thank you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure your, uh, I'm pretty sure the followers will take advantage of this as well. So why don't you tell us more about your sources here? Yeah. So I started blogging less than two years ago. Uh, it was the main motivation was because I was starting to started to forget things. So you you do something, and uh, after a few months, you knew you know that you do did something, but you can't remember how. So I started writing blog just to uh, you know keep track of what I what I've done, and then uh, I realized that a lot of people can resonate with this. So. They face similar problems, similar issues, and uh, they found it useful uh, to read and 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 learn something maybe and hope yeah hopefully learn something. So that was the main motivation and uh, yeah so far I've wrote written like I don't know maybe 
100 blog posts, uh, different topics, data topics, but Power BI is the most uh, dominant one. So I, I think I'm mostly right about Power BI. There are some some articles on SQL Server on Azure, uh, but Power BI is is the main topic. And uh, yeah, so I always like to read the comments from people if it's something is not clear or if there are some uh, errors in the in text, which happened, of course. Uh, yeah, just let me know and uh, yeah, we can discuss this. Other than that, I, all, I recently started YouTube channel, but I don't have time to 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 work on it as as much as I would as as much as I would like. Uh, yes, and yeah, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm also sharing the content from my blog and some interesting things that I I find on internet for example some interesting blog posts uh, from the resources we mentioned earlier okay thank you thank you that's good so you guys know where uh, you can find the content there awesome so let's move on to the next slide here and let's see what else we have okay final thoughts anything else that you would like to share with the power bi followers here yeah well I think we cover a lot of that, a lot of things uh, regarding Power BI. Yeah, I can't remember anything specific. I mean, yeah, enjoy Power BI and uh, uh, try to try to use it and practice, practice, practice. That's the the that's mm -hmm. the that's the, the the most important thing if you want to to master it and become better. Just practice and. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, open data sets you can find on web. Download, play around, try to create something from this, some insights, whatever, and uh, that will improve. And uh, that will improve your Power BI skills, and that will boost your confidence when it comes to to working with Power BI. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes absolutely are part of oh yeah we are making it every mm -hmm. day <laughs> sure it's part of the learning process so yeah of course keep going keep going keep going yeah. and you will eventually get there yeah learning but learning by doing that's right that's right okay i think we are almost over with this session and so real quick and uh, you already mentioned your sources i want to mention the 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 followers here I created an online, an online course, and this is my first online course. And we mentioned this briefly at the beginning, Nicola, about Power BI. And this is about Power BI Desktop because everything starts in Power BI Desktop. So the designs starts with Power BI Desktop. So if you guys want to learn Power BI Desktop from scratch, go to my YouTube channel and find the content there. The, there you can find the link of uh, the link to the course and take advantage of the course. It's going to be free until October 31st. So before we leave, uh, there is a good question here. Any thoughts on Power Apps? Mm, I, I don't use them. So uh, mm -hmm. for me, it's hard to, to say. I don't feel competent to, to talk about mm -hmm. it. I don't okay. use them. No, that's 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 totally fair. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Power Apps yet, but it's on my list to learn them. So, but that was a good question. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Ah, that was it. Not too bad, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we made it in, in an hour. So that was awesome. Good one, good one, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for, thank you guys for joining Thank you, Nicola, for taking the time to, to have this interview with me. And hopefully we can have another interview in the future. We can we can have more practice. Perhaps we can Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, we, why not? Perhaps yeah. we can Th thanks go... for inviting me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being a great host. And uh, <laughs> good luck with the course. I will look forward to, to watch it. Yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, it would be very helpful. If you have just a case, we can go over the case and then we can solve questions that the 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 viewers might have. So that would be a good a good uh, exercise to have. 
absolutely absolutely so let, let's keep in touch and thank you everyone for joining and thank you everyone for joining and yeah for hanging up with us yes thank you for your patience as well <laughs> all right